Hello Year 6, welcome to English at Turner Schools. My name's Mrs Riddles and I'm dressed as one of my favourite characters of literature today. I'm not just crazy. Okay, so there are so many things that we want you to get out of English at Turner Schools. We want you to love reading. We want you to be able to read and have opinions. Read and say, I agree with that. Read and say, that's not right. I don't agree with that. I don't like that character. Read and analyse characters and settings and themes in detail. We want you to understand how texts are shaped by the time they were written or the different culture they come from. We want you to explore the world through reading. We want you to love writing. We want you to write original, inspiring pieces of creative writing. We want you to write powerful and persuasive letters and speeches and newspaper articles. We want you to write accurately so when you go out into the big wide world and apply for jobs, you make an amazing impression. We want you to speak effectively and convincingly and listen with respect and tolerance and kindness. English is the art of communication, how you present yourself to others, whether you are speaking or listening. There's a whole lot of things that you'll do while studying English with us at Turner Schools. We can't fit all of that into one lesson, so we picked a reading activity that we really hope you'll enjoy. Reading. One of the most important things when reading is that you enjoy it. I've picked for you an extract from one of my favourite books ever, Great Expectations by Charles Dickens. We study Oliver Twist in Year 7, which is also by Charles Dickens, so it'll be great for you to get to know a bit about his writing. He is a very famous Victorian writer. He wrote books that tried to change society and make the lives of the poor people in Victorian England better. One of his most famous characters is the very odd and slightly terrifying Miss Havisham. Let's read a description of her. So, whenever we approach a text, we always look at the glossary on the right-hand side where we introduce any tricky or unfamiliar words. So, let's have a look through those now. So, veil, a piece of fine material worn by women at their wedding to cover their face. So, usually this bit would come over and then the lady lifts it back. Okay, so this is a veil. Trunks are cases. Bosom is chest. Trinkets is jewellery. Looking glass is mirror. You might have heard looking glass before through Alice in Wonderland, Alice through the looking glass. So at this point in the book, Pip, our narrator, a 10 year old boy, is meeting Miss Havisham for the very first time. She was dressed in rich materials, satins and lace and silks, all of white. Her shoes were white and she had a long white veil dependent from her hair and she had bridal flowers in her hair, but her hair was white. Some bright jewels sparkled on her neck and on her hands, and some other jewels lay sparkling on the table. Dresses less splendid than the dress she wore, and half-packed trunks were scattered about. She had not quite finished dressing, for she had but one shoe on. The other was on the table near her hand. Her veil was but half arranged. Her watch and chain were not put on, and some lace for her bosom lay with those trinkets, and with her handkerchief and gloves, and some flowers and a prayer book, all confusedly heaped about the looking glass. Let's look at the glossary first before we continue reading. Ought means should. Luster means shine or glow. Withered is dried, shriveled away. Think about withered flowers in a vase or withered fruit in a fruit bowl when it goes all wrinkly. It was not in the first few moments that I saw all these things, though I saw more of them in the first moments than might be supposed. But I saw that everything within my view, which ought to be white, had been white long ago and had lost its luster and was faded and yellow. I saw that the bride within the bridal dress had withered like the dress and like the flowers and had no brightness left but the brightness of her sunken eyes. I saw that the dress had been put upon the rounded figure of a young woman and that the figure upon which it now hung loose had shrunk to skin and bone. We'll look at the glossary first. So waxwork is models made out of wax, like at Madame Tussauds in London, you may have been there. Personage means person. Lying in state, this phrase means when the body of a dead official is placed in a public building for people to pay their respects. Once I had been taken to see some ghastly waxwork at the fair, representing I know not what impossible personage lying in state. Once I had been taken to one of our old marsh churches to see a skeleton in the ashes of a rich dress that had been dug out of a vault under the church pavement. Now waxwork and skeletons seemed to have dark eyes that moved and looked at me. I should have cried out if I could. 
So we read a bit about the very strange Miss Havisham. The person describing her is Pip, a 10 year old boy. The book is partly set in the Kent Marshes, so very local to here. When you read it, you find it all sorts out about our local history. Often in English, what we would now do is analyse how the author has presented the character. We might answer a question such as, how has Dickens presented Miss Havisham in this extract? You might not have done anything like that yet. So what we're going to get you to do is an activity that would get you ready to answer that question. So your task, either print out an image of Miss Havisham, or even better, what I'd really like you to do, is draw your own picture of her based on a description. She's a strange skeleton-like figure. She seems old, she has white hair. She's wearing a wedding dress that is too big for her shrunken figure and a veil and only one shoe. Look at these images of her to help you if you'd like to draw her. So we've got the black and white drawing there from the Victorian era. In the middle, we have a lady performing her on stage. And at the bottom there, we have an actress called Helena Bonham Carter who played her in the film. Okay, so you can see she's very eccentric looking, very strange, dressed in this faded wedding dress. Hopefully that's given you some ideas for your own drawing. So your task, you're going to use the quotations I've chosen for you on the next slide for you to label your image. So I've modelled one for you. So at Turner Schools, within our English lessons, we always do, I do, we do, you do, which means your teacher will do an I do, they will model a model for you. Then we'll do a we do, which is a whole class will do one together. And then you'll do a you do, which is where you independently do your own answer. Okay, so once you've drawn your picture, in a moment, once we've had, gone through all of the quotations, you'll label um, the different parts of your picture. So there, you've got an arrow pointing at the veil. She had a long white veil. OK, we always put our quotes into quote marks because that shows us that we've lifted those words directly from the text. All right. We always use quote marks to show quotes from the text. Let's have a look at the quote you're going to use to label your picture. So number one, she had bridal flowers in her hair. Number two, her hair was white. Number three, some bright jewels sparkled on her neck. Number four, she had but one shoe on. Number five, everything was faded and yellow. Number six, sunken eyes. Number seven, a skeleton. Okay, so think about how you can show those on your picture. The one that you might not be familiar with is sunken eyes. So if somebody's very tired, um, their eyes might look a bit more deep set. They might have sort of black shaded areas underneath their eyes. Um, a dead body has quite sunken eyes because the eyeballs will go back in the head. So she's being presented in quite a deathly way with sunken eyes and skeletons. So how can you interpret that in your picture? So think about how you can show these quotes. Uh, pause the video now and come back when you're ready. Welcome back. I hope you managed to um, highlight all those bits on your picture. So when we're doing English, we sort of turn into detectives. A really good author won't say exactly what they mean. They'll make you do a little bit of work as a reader and read between the lines and come to your own predictions and opinions about the characters and settings and situations. So we're going to look at each quote. So our description of Miss Havisham. She had bridal flowers in her hair. So what does this tell us about her? You can either pause the video and have a think and call out an answer, or you can just listen. It's entirely up to you. If you'd like to, pause the video now. Okay. She had bridal flowers in her hair, tells us she is, or once was, getting married. Our next quote, her hair was white. So if you'd like to, pause the video now and call out an answer, or you can just listen. So what does her hair was white tell us about her? Perhaps she's old, or maybe she's had a fright or a shock that has turned her hair white. Our next quote, some bright jewels sparkled on her neck. What does that tell us about her? So pause and call out, or just listen. This suggests she is, or once was, wealthy. Our next quote, she had but one shoe on. What does this tell us about her? So pause if you like. She could be forgetful. Or maybe she's somehow frozen in time. Maybe everything's just stopped in one particular moment and she's not moved on from that. Our next quote, everything was faded and yellow. So her dress 
I don't know if you can see that, it's all faded and yellow. What does that tell us about her? It suggests everything is aging and rotting or decaying, like we mentioned flowers in a vase or fruit in a fruit bowl before when we looked at the word withering. Okay, so something that's not as good as it once was also suggests that things aren't looked after. Our next uh, quote, sunken eyes. So pause if you'd like and call out an answer. Sunken eyes suggest death aging or not getting enough sleep so somebody that's not looking after themselves someone that's getting older but there's also a bit of death imagery there reminding us of dead bodies and then finally skeleton so pause and call out what you think it tells us about her okay again she's being compared to a dead body this is called death imagery so we've got two things there that are giving us quite a sort of ghostly impression of this character okay Let's move on to our final task. So now you have a beautiful labelled image of Miss Havisham. We want to try and really push ourselves. So what impression do you have of this character? So in school, um, we would do a tick and fix. We would go around the room and check everybody's answers. And that is, gives you the opportunity to add to your own notes if you hear answers that you haven't thought of yourself and add to yours. So different impressions. Obviously, there's lots of things we can say about this character. But one thing I thought was this gives us quite a mysterious impression of her. We don't know why she's ended up like this, dressed in this way, uh, why everything seems to be just a sort of stopped in one particular moment. It's quite ghostly. She's dressed in white. She's got sunken eyes. She's compared to a skeleton. She's eccentric. I could have said strange, but we always like to challenge ourselves to use really ambitious words. So eccentric means strange in appearance or behaviour. So think about the different words you can use. You're more than welcome to use words from there, but we'd love you to come up with your own. So our challenge, every time we do a task at um, Turner Schools, we always have a challenge question where you get the really deep level learning, really think more deeply about what you're being asked. So your challenge, underneath your image, try to fill in this gap fill. I think Miss Havisham is a something character. I think this because I imagine Pip would feel when he saw her because. Okay, so you're going to fill in those gaps. So thinking what kind of character you think she is. So coming up with your own word, or you can magpie one of the words above. And then you're going to tell me why you think that. So what has given you that impression? And then Pip, remember, is our 10 year old narrator. So I imagine Pip would feel. So he said she was the strangest person he'd ever seen. So how would he feel? What emotion would he feel with her? And why? I really can't wait to read your responses. I'm so excited. Um, thank you so much for listening today and goodbye.